these are, in my view, very toxic issues uh, which uh, do sow fear uh, amongst our residents. And that is why it's so important for us to have a referendum in this country on the renegotiated position to let the people decide finally whether or not we want to remain in the European Union or whether we want to come out. Because as long as we stay in the European Union, it will be very, very difficult, if not impossible, to cut immigration from the EU. Okay, I think we must let Shemek um, answer on this one as the representative of the UK candidate for Tooting. And you've been you keep ex uh, accused of exploiting <coughs> fears, and also um, Daniel suggested that you're there, you claim that you're there for pulling out of Europe and for cutting migration. Your thoughts? Uh, yeah, um, well, <laughs> okay, so first of all, the policy um, is, well, well the, the policy is as a management. Just to recap, um, the idea is that the, the system is supposed to be fair. We, we want to have a points-based system. We don't want to discriminate based on anyone. We basically want all the people who want to come in to be subject to the same points-based system. But the current system is actually discriminatory because it favors the, the, the EU citizens. Um, so that's just to clear up the um, reference to you guys. In terms of the question, um, in terms of the question that was asked, um, is, is the EU migration a positive or a negative? Um, okay, I think that you know this is a very very broad question, and you've got to distinguish between what is a positive migration and what is a negative migration, because you should never throw everyone into the same bucket. Um, and I think. You basically need to look at the, the positives of migration and, and assess them separately. And I think that just in, the, in terms of numbers, um, the, the EU migrants have contributed more than they've taken out from the system. So, for that reason, in economic terms, um, that the migration has been good. But then again, you've got to take into account the fact that certain infrastructure has been stretched as a, as a result. So I, I think that that question should really be broken down into sub-questions for, for us to be able to answer it properly. Which we'll do at some point, but um, let me just pick up on some of your points, and I want to bring James into this as, as a specialist in EU law. Um, Shemek, they're saying that we can have positive migration or negative migration, that the current system is discriminatory, because it favours UK citizens, is that the case? Well, the first thing I would say, when you start using rhetoric of positive migration and negative migration, that, has, uh, that leads down a very dangerous road, because then you start to categorise people in, in, uh, in terms of positive individuals and negative. That's not to say that there hasn't been abuse. We know that there has been abuse um, of uh, migration, but I would emphasise that EU law contains within it adequate provision to tackle abuse. It's in the treaty, it's there, and I think it's very um, difficult to argue that there's a need to expand the abuse provisions. Uh, but to come back to the first point, uh, <coughs> when you start to characterise people as negative and positive, very difficult to do that, because human behaviour is complex. Someone can come into the country with genuine reasons, they can then uh, 
fall upon hard times, and many of us can recognize that that can happen, and then it becomes very difficult then to say that that person is a negative or a positive. So I would be very cautious about using that kind of rhetoric. And to my mind, it actually um, is resonant of what is wrong with UKIP, what is wrong with the populist agenda. Unfortunately, elements of the Conservative Party, I understand elements, are, are tending to pander now to UKIP rhetoric too much. Um, and the problem is that um, it sets up a uh, anti-foreign rhetoric, which is very dangerous. And it's, it's actually very ironic that we're here uh, talking in, in the context of the Polish um, debate, because of course Poland, uh, probably more than any other country that I can think of being in student history, suffered at the hands of that kind of polarization where you start to talk about a, a positive person and a negative person from both sides of course, from the west of the country and from the east of the country. So I personally am very cautious uh, about that kind of rhetoric. Okay, thank you. Uh, Roger Casale, the rhetoric, the polarisation that James touched upon, and Shemek also mentioned that um, migrants are contributing more in terms of, well, financially, you've got the statistics, but also culturally, something you're promoting European values. Your thoughts on that? Well, we promote European citizenship and the right to free movement and to participate in democratic life in this country. We're, um, uh, that, that, that's, that's what uh, Europeans do. And the question um, from the back, sorry, I, I didn't catch your name, was, uh, what was your name? Jakob Pawlowski, Polish Professor <coughs> Jakob's question was, is immigration uh, from the EU good for the economy, I think? You said for the economy. Yes. Uh, and we haven't really heard too much yet about the economy. So, uh, I mean, everybody has their own answer to that question, but it, it, uh, Nigel Farage's answer to that question was yes. You remember he conceded last year before the European elections that... Uh, immigration from the European Union was good for the economy, but he said some things are more important than, than money. Um, the reason that it's good for the economy is because it pushes growth up, uh, it uh, helps to create employment, uh, it helps to pay down the government debt, and uh, it helps to push taxes up, or as I uh, said this morning in a tweet, uh, the axes are up, thanks to immigration <laughs> EU. Uh, the axes are up, but uh, we need to get them put down again, but that's for a different reason. Now, um, New Europeans said this last year after the budget, 2014, because the Office for National Statistics uh, published the forecast for immigration. Although the government had a target of 100,000 net immigration, they said that it would be 200,000, and thankfully it's been nearly 300,000, or to be precise, 298,000. And as a result of this, as this is one of the principal drivers, we have uh, good economic growth in this country, which was predicted last year.